Tomat Hitzelsperger, uh, Romania will uh, will start to Euro to the final tournament against uh, Ukraine in München, your born city, uh, but will be a special game for Romania because emotionally speaking, because playing against uh, Ukraine uh, in all that uh, uh, that subject related to the to the war will be a. Dis- um, a, a a very a very special game from Romania from this point of view uh, yes I, I would say so it's it's not uh, just a regular game a eh? it's at the European championships it's it's very important uh, everybody has prepared for it went through the qualifying stages but it's a different dimension with Ukraine being part of it there's huge support in Germany for Ukraine uh, from everything I know and, and and my life in Germany it's it's important to support Ukraine in this tif- difficult period but um, at the end it's you know there's two teams playing football and and you know it's about how they play uh, whether they respect you know all everything that's related to football fair play and everything that that should happen but it will be a special atmosphere I honestly believe so now that I'm here in Bucharest I will have a close eye on the Romanian team and, and I hope they win and whatever is outside of football is very important but for those 90 minutes I can easily say that I support the Romanian team Do you think the German fans in general will be close to Ukraine, especially in this game? Um, maybe some. Uh, you know, it's probably understandable. Like I said, a uh, Ukrainian uh, nation going through a r- really, really difficult period right now. And, and uh, that attracts people from around the world to support the team and they want them to do well. But um, it all, as long as it's, it's fair and in, in the stands, I think you shouldn't worry too much. Because like I said, you know, the Romanian team, they have a lot of fans as well. Um, I'm clearly another one. As I said, having been here uh, briefly, uh, I can definitely support the team. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. If you were the the coach of national team of Romania, what could be your advice for stopping Mudrik and Yaremchuk in in the first game in uh, in Munich? Well, it's it's always a, a, a team effort, and like I said, you know Romania has done well in, in the qualifying round with only conceding five goals. Um, it's like you know defending well uh, as as a, as a team. It's not just focusing on two players and say how can we stop them. Um, it's you know being solid defensively, and, and I have no no doubt that the Romanian team will will do well. Um, because in this group, probably Belgium are the favourites, um, but a good opening game against Ukraine is, is vital. Apparently, as you said, Belgium will be the favourite of this uh, group, but uh, it looks like uh, this national team of Belgium, it's not, it's not the same like with two, three, four years ago, do you agree? I agree, but still, you know, we've often experienced that with a lot of big names, great individuals, it doesn't make necessarily a great team so I've watched Belgium recently and you see another good group of talents that can easily beat any team in the world uh, so I would be careful you know there was a they called it a golden generation there's not really there anymore um, but still be careful because they, they are very good in talent development in Belgium um, I, I would regard them as the favorites in the group You are born in München. You grew up in Bayern. So, as you as you know very good, what means Bayern as a spirit, as attitude, as a as a club. Uh, and in Romania, it was a very special discussion related to Radu Dragushin, who refused to to go to Bayern, uh, uh, and uh, he chose to go uh, in in Premier League to Tottenham. Uh, you think he made a mistake? Um, it's probably a bit unfair now to, to make a judgment here. Um, I can only describe that Bayern Munich in, in, in this season they've had a lot of trouble you know, internally and they didn't have a good season in the Bundesliga. They're still in the Champions League but overall the club is in a transition period. That's why I have some sympathy to choose you know, a Premier League club. I've played in the Premier League long enough, it's a great league so I can't blame him. Yes, I would regard Bayern as a bigger club than Tottenham, uh, but it's about his own development. So maybe he saw a better career path uh, starting at Tottenham than going to Bayern. So that makes sense from a career perspective. So fair play to him and, and good luck. Who was the best, Georgi Hadji or Lothar Mateus? The same generation? <laughs> Uh, well, it's, this is a, a tough one. I only brief, uh, recently st- uh, spoke. And to I'm waiting not a diplomat, uh, not a diplomat answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're different. They're different players. Uh, different abilities. Uh, Georgi Hachi was just like you know had that special. You know when you watched him, his his technique was just phenomenal. Lothar was like a libero, as we said. So two different players, and probably for the country. I mean, Georgi Hachi is probably the biggest player in the country. Uh, at all time, um, maybe you disagree, but Lothar Mateus is one of many very, very good players, so Georgi Hachi probably means more to, to Romania. 
It was uh, surprisingly for you that Xabi Alonso refused to go to Liverpool and uh, he preferred to, to, to stay in Leverkusen, probably for, for, the, for the Champions League, I suppose, especially. Yes, I was a little bit surprised. I thought he would move on to the next club, to maybe Liverpool, Bayern or, you know, wherever. But uh, it just underlines his, his, uh, his clear strategy, how he wants to develop as a coach. He, he thinks it's the best to stay in Leverkusen and it makes sense now. Um, to, to defend the title maybe, to play Champions League next season. Uh, I really admire him as, as a coach. He was an outstanding player as well. And he brings everything together that you could ask for. One of those great ex-players who moves on to still learn as a coach and doesn't take anything for granted. So he has, he has had a huge impact on, on German football and the Bundesliga and we're great to have him. You have a special personal story. You was the first player who talks about homosexuality in, in general. You, you think that uh, in this moment the players still have problem about talking about this, uh, this subject. It's a very sensitive subject. And in, uh, in, what, uh, in what sense do you think there are a lot of homosexual players in these moments in football? Maybe even in the big squad? Yes, it's uh, it's never easy talking about it because there aren't uh, many role models. Uh, you don't have many players you can look up to and listen to their stories. So I tried to tell my story and give an example of what the difficulties were and how my life has changed. And my life has changed in a really, really positive way. But I understand there's a lot of pressure in football already. Uh, this would add some extra pressure and it's a shame because this is something that's part of your uh, identity. You shouldn't need to hide it, but uh, the players who are, you know, who are affected, they do, uh, choose to, to hide. And um, I keep mentioning the positive aspects and hopefully one day uh, others will, will follow. But so far it's, uh, it's a difficult subject and um, we have to accept it. But I think the overall environment is changing. Fans, uh, media is more encouraging. It's just the players, they have to go that step. And it's a big step, not only for football players, for many. And that was my ambition, to tell my story and hopefully encourage others. What will be the final to, uh, to the Euro? <laughs> Well, Germany has to be in it, and I said uh, France. For me, they're the favourites, so Germany, France. So I would like to name Romania, but you said no diplomatic answers, so Germany, France. Thanks a lot, Thomas. Thank it's you. a Thanks right. a lot.